If there's one thing that I've learned during my time of doing this, it's that filmmakers, video creators, and photographers constantly have to adapt to the ever-changing environment. I look at the ZV-1 as the perfect little camera that makes me stretch from what I thought was impossible to accomplishing something that is possible. It's not about how little you have in order to get the right picture. It's about getting the picture that helps tell your story. People complain about the ZV-1 and some of its limitations, and I'm guilty of it too. But when it's all said and done, I have used this camera as a V-cam in a client shoot for over 55 YouTube videos. I've shot nature shots, macro shots, slow-mo shots, wide-angle shots, real estate videos, versed it against the A7S III, A7 III, the ZV-E10, and Envato Elements. I shot in the snow with it, the rain, in forests, in mountains, at the beach, on boats, on gimbals and body rigs. I've gone handheld, been on steady cams, on long poles, short poles, in product videos, photography, time lapse, tennis matches, as a vlog setup, as a rig setup, on a table dolly, on sliders, with ND filters and macro lenses and wide lenses. It's never overheated on me. It's never turned off on me. It's never stopped recording for no reason. It's never given me a corrupt video file. It's been super reliable and overall an amazing camera. So I've had a pretty good relationship with the ZV-1 for the past two years. I'm gonna tell you what I love about it, what I don't love about it, and my overall opinion of the ZV-1 today on the Film Lions. So as you guys probably know, I've had this camera for over two years. I've made a ton of videos with it and about it. And today I'm gonna to tell you some of my thoughts and opinions about it. What are some must have accessories if you're in the market and you're just looking to buy maybe a ZV-1 or something in that same budget range and why you might wanna pick the ZV-1 over one of its competitors. Now there's no perfect camera out there yet but there are some accessories that you can add to this to really make this thing live up to its fullest potential. I think the best thing that has come out of my time with the ZV-1 is my growth. I feel like this little camera really made me stretch not only my creativity, but my problem solving skills. So I was able to really understand better how the camera works and take this little camera to a whole new level. Up until this very point, this little camera lives in my camera bag, and anytime I take my camera bag with me, the ZV-1 comes with me. Now, I might have an A-cam like the A7S III or the A7 III, but this camera always stays with me, and it's right there when I need it to get that B-cam shot. Originally, when I got this camera, I wasn't too impressed with it. The picture that I was getting out of it wasn't that impressive. The colors were off and I noticed the skin tones were off. I didn't like how fast the battery ran out and I wasn't a huge fan of the fixed lens. I didn't feel like the stabilization was good enough to go handheld. Even with active stabilization on, it punched in a little bit so you lost out on that 24 millimeter lens that we were hoping we were getting. Before I got the ZV-1, I had the Osmo Pocket and the A7 III. So I was really used to that nice stabilized footage out of the Osmo Pocket and that beautiful full frame picture out of the A7 III. So when I first started to record with the ZV-1, I wasn't too impressed with the stabilization or the image. But instead of just returning the camera, I said, I'm going to figure this out. I'm gonna dive into this camera and I'm gonna see how I can make this camera worth it for other people. Somewhere along that journey, you have joined me and together we have grown not only with the ZV-1, but just camera gear and filmmaking in general. The first thing that I wanted to figure out when it came to getting cinematic footage with the ZV-1 is how to make this footage more stabilized. So I started to do a little bit of research and I found the Crane M2 gimbal, which was the perfect gimbal for the ZV-1. Now since then they've come out with better quality and more powerful gimbals, which I've also used with the ZV-1. I'll leave all this stuff in the description. But the gimbal was the key to getting that stabilized footage. Gimbals and the ZV-1 go together very well. In fact, if I was to recommend one accessory, it would be to get a gimbal with your ZV-1. Even if you're into vlogging, the gimbal helps you hold the camera a little bit further away from your face so you don't feel so close to that frame. So now when I'm going anywhere serious, I'll make sure that I have one of these smaller looking gimbals inside of my camera bag so that I can quickly put my ZV-1 on it and have some cinematic footage 
right at my fingertips. Next, I wanted to get the image right because the image straight out of camera, to me, didn't look that realistic. So I dove into the picture profiles. I even made a video about it and I'll leave that one in the description below. But basically, I came up with my own customized picture profile. It's Cine2 and it has very similar characteristics to S Cinetone which is the really high quality picture profile that comes out of the A7S III and other full frame Sony cameras. After I figured out that picture profile and I loaded it right into my camera, my footage looks, as far as colors go, the same as my full frame cameras. Maybe you can tell a difference with dynamic range, but the colors are there, which are beautiful. They look real, the skin tones are real, the greens are rich, the reds aren't too red, and the skies are beautifully blue and it's just the picture profile I leave baked into my ZV-1. I would say that's a mandatory thing that you need to do right when you open up your ZV-1 is turn it to the picture profiles and go ahead and input the custom picture profile that I came up with if you wanna get the truest to life colors out of your ZV-1 in my opinion. The battery life out of the ZV-1 was annoying because it only gave me maybe 45 minutes to an hour if I was shooting in 4K 24. So I tried putting a cage on it first and then putting an external battery mounted to the top. And it was a little bit bulkier, but it definitely helped with the battery life. But by doing that, I wasn't able to put it on a gimbal anymore. So I tried hooking the external battery up to the gimbal and before I knew it, my rig was growing fast. So then I decided, you know what, I'm not gonna put the external battery on the outside. I'm just gonna get some cheap batteries that last a little bit longer than the factory battery that comes with the ZV-1 and I'll just, quickly swap them in and out. Although it's a little bit annoying, it's not as annoying as running out of battery and not having another battery to replace it with. So I found some really cheap batteries. I'll leave them in the description for the ZV-1 that seem to last maybe about 10% to 15% longer than the factory battery. Do you see where I'm going with this? Every little problem that the ZV-1 has makes you think and become creative and makes you come up with a solution. The next problem that I have is that when I have the ZV-1 hooked up to my gimbal, it's very hard, almost impossible, to get the battery out. And so you'd have to take the ZV-1 off of the gimbal, put the new battery in or the new SD card in, then put it back, put it back on your gimbal, and then have to rebalance the gimbal again. Some of the upperclassmen in this school already know the trick, but it's an Arca Swiss mount plate that I mounted to the bottom of the cage of the ZV-1. Then I hooked the female side of this Arca Swiss mount plate up to the gimbal. I balanced everything out, so now I can quickly quick connect onto my gimbal, and then take it off, change out the battery, and then put it right back on. And the gimbals can handle it. Now, if you were to start adding more accessories to the outside of this thing, the gimbal might get a little sketchy. But in my opinion, maybe all you need is a little external mic out here and you'd be fine and the gimbal could hold it perfectly. So the cage and the Arca Swiss mount plate, in my opinion, is probably the second most important accessory or accessories that you can purchase when you buy the ZV-1. You might say, well, why not just charge the ZV-1 from the gimbal? And the reason I don't like to do that is because then the gimbal runs out of battery faster. And so what you might have had four or five hours with the gimbal turns into maybe two hours or maybe one and a half hours with the gimbal. And then you don't have a way to recharge your gimbal while you're out. I could get four or five or maybe even eight hours out of this battery. But once I hook the ZV-1 up to it and it's constantly drawing juice, I, I lose about three or four hours out of this thing. Now, as far as the lens not being wide enough, especially when you turn on active stabilization to do vlogging or to get a wide angle shot, Ulanzi sells a wide angle lens that I installed on the ZV-1 and I constantly find myself taking it on and off of the ZV-1 just so that I can have more creative freedom. Are you following along with me how this camera just makes you stretch and figure things out and problem solve so that when you graduate and you go to a bigger camera system or setup, you'll be able to have these tools in your head of saying, I know how to problem solve because the ZV-1 forced me to. This wide angle lens also turns into a macro lens if you're a huge nerd like me. So with all those little problems figured out, it turns this little camera into a miniature powerhouse. I've been able to get some really good shots with the ZV-1 and nobody's really ever said to me, that looks like a budget commercial. If you just learn exposure, lighting, and storytelling, then there's no limit on how far you can go with this little camera. It has single-handedly taken me to places artistically that I never knew I would go. It's opened up creative paths inside my brain that I didn't even know existed. And most importantly, it's allowed me to achieve professional looking footage. I know there's always gonna be critics out there who are laughing at this idiot 
who's hyping up the ZV-1. But this camera means a lot to me because it's helped me grow so much over the past two years. Now I still have a ways to go and maybe the ZV-2 will pick up where the ZV-1 leaves off. Okay, but now for the bad stuff. Although there's so many little problem solving tools and tricks that you can make with the ZV-1, it's kind of annoying. I would love to pull my camera out of the camera bag and not have to throw it on a gimbal or put a wide angle lens on it or attach an Arca Swiss mount plate to it. Just kind of pull it out, have the form factor fit right in my hands, be able to take some cinematic footage without having to throw it through Catalyst, which is an extra step in post-production. And by the way, a little bit about Catalyst. I know there's a lot of people out there that love Catalyst, but I don't choose to use it because it is an extra step. And you do have to make sure that you're shooting in certain formats with the ZV-1 and you have to make sure your shutter speed's higher. I like to be in complete control of the camera when I'm out shooting and not compromise and say, oh, I'll just throw it through Catalyst. Let me turn the shutter speed way up. So yes, Catalyst is great and you can get some really good cinematic shots with it, but it's just not my cup of tea. Now, maybe I'm asking too much to just have a camera ready to go straight off the shelf with all of those great things, but we are all allowed to dream. I just use whatever tools are at my disposal. And if that means that I have to do some problem solving to get that final shot, then that's what I'm gonna do. If I'm complaining about this stuff, I'm complaining about the only thing that I have, at least in this budget range which doesn't leave a lot of room for me to be happy about it. So the best thing to do is just to say, I'm gonna figure this out and I'm going to make this camera work. So if I can't change the camera, then I'm going to add the accessories that I need to change it. And if anything, I'm going to change myself. I'm gonna change the way that I think and I'm gonna change the way that I approach a camera. And instead of complaining about it, I'm gonna say, let's figure this out and go out there and try to get some really good shots. So that's my two cents about the ZV-1. I'm not being sponsored by Sony. If I was, they probably wouldn't be happy about that last bit. But it's just a great little camera. Really enjoy it. If you're thinking about getting one, I highly recommend it. But I know most of you already have the ZV-1 and you're just here to learn just like me so that we can grow together. If you're like me and you love the ZV-1, make sure to like this video so it will have a wider reach. I'm Joe with the Film Alliance and until the next video, have a nice week.